Hey flower folks, welcome to Share Inspirations. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you three ways of recycling and reusing flower waste, cut flower waste specifically. As we all know, who anybody who grows flowers specifically for cut flower use or not, the flowers eventually are destined for the trash can or, you know, in the long run, the landfill. Um, these are the three ways that I have found personally um, best as far as not letting them go into the landfill. Number one that comes natural to most of us gardeners is going ahead and putting that in our compost bin. So if you have a warm compost bin, you can put the, chop the flowers up and put them in the warm bin and they will eat and turn into castings that you can use in your garden. There's also a way to go ahead and chop the flower stems down and put them down as mulch. And those are the two most, um, most commonly used methods to recycle flower waste. Um, number two is trying to dry flowers to go ahead and do either dry arrangements or wreaths or headbands. Those seem to be the three things that are currently trending in the dry flower market. And most flowers dry very well. This is something that I wanted to give you an example of. Right here, these are sunflowers that have lived their life in the vase. These are about seven, they were seven days in the vase. And what I have done is I've gone ahead and tied a rubber band. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hang it. And if about in a week or so, um, it's going to turn dry and crispy with its stems and then I can use these in dry arrangements. The stems of it um, don't turn brittle as some, for some flowers the stems may turn brittle. Um, these ones along with, um, I've, I've tried a multitude of, of ones, the ones that I found that dry very well are yarrow, straw flower, sunflowers, um, Celosia, coxcomb varieties, and so on and so forth. Um, they can also be utilized as pressed flowers to do arts and crafts and that stuff too. Um, my personal favorite is going ahead and letting them hang dry to make wreaths with, arrangements with, and headbands with. That's way number two. Now coming to way number three, which seems to be my favorite, is making petals of it. So for this one, you gotta be a little bit careful. Um, these right here are rose petals, calendulas, uh, lavender, chamomile, um, and so on and so forth. And what I do with these is I make bath teas along with Epsom salt and some essential oils and they make wonderful gifts. All of my flowers are organically grown so I'm giving a quality gift. If I was to purchase these separately, um, each one depending on how much quantity I'm buying, it would be a lot of money to go ahead and buy each one separately or even a mix if you're buying it. Um, any Anybody who grows organically grown stuff knows that they um, go for more money than your normal grown stuff because there's no pesticides and all that used. Um, for this stuff though, you gotta be a little careful as to what you're drying. You don't wanna dry anything that is toxic to your skin or um, basically stick with things that are of herbal value. For example, right here, I have lemon bee balm. Not only does it smell good once it's dried, but it does have herbal value um, in bath teas, bath bombs, bath um, salts and uh, scrubs and so on and so forth. So I stick with things that have high herbal value that I can go ahead and use here. Um, yarrow is also another one. So, so far I have experimented with roses, calendulas, lemon bee balm, lavender, chamomile, and yarrow. And they make great, great dried petals. And what I do is once they've done living their life, I go ahead and separate, like say this was rose, I would go ahead and pluck the petals out and just lay them flat in a plate or a tray and they dry out in a few days. 
Um, another flower that dries very well is um, straw flower. This does not have any herbal value. And I found that the stem is very, um, it gets very brittle. Like you can save it to a certain degree, but it does get very brittle. It's best to go ahead and just yank the stem off and put a, um, a toothpick in the back to be able to use this type of stuff in your reeds. Um, so going ahead and using straw flowers in the wreaths and headbands and so on and so forth because it doesn't have any herbal value. Sunflowers don't really have any herbal value as far as petals and all that is concerned. So they would be better off being used in your um, arrangements, dry arrangements and wreaths and bands and whatever. I personally enjoy making dry arrangements with some color um, to give as gifts for Christmas time and so on. Um, so these were the three ways um, I'm going to go ahead and recap. Number one is you can do composting or mulching. You can do it in your warm bin or just go ahead and chop them down and put them into your beds as mulch. Number two, you can go ahead and hang dry most flowers and dry them for dry arrangements, wreaths and headbands. Um, certain flowers dry without stems. Some flowers dry better with stems, sunflowers, roses. Um, and uh, I've tried zinnias, didn't have much luck with those. But sunflowers and um, uh, these guys right here, straw flowers, dry very well for me. And celosia and coxcomb, the ones that look like a brain. Um, and number third way is going ahead and making um, dried petals, just separating the petals from all of your flowers and making bath teas, bath bombs, bath salts, scrubs, and so on and so forth. Just for this one, there's a caveat, making sure you're not using large spur, you're not using anything that is um, poisonous and toxic. You want to use that are things that are high herbal value, uh, that are of high herbal value. I hope you enjoy the video guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.